Welcome back to the boat shop, everybody. Missed y'all. Thought I'd check in with you, show you where we're at. This is where we're at. Oh, this is so hateful. I mean, this is so hateful. We're just come from, oh, this is, yeah, okay. Man, I know, right? I could CAD design this thing. You guys tell me that all the time. We'll just draw it up. Fusion 360, which I'm becoming reasonably good at operating. And, uh, you know, that's that sounds great. And, and then I could draw it all up. And then I could order some plywood and send it somewhere and get it cut out. And by the time it got back to my house, I'd look at it and think, well, that's junk. And I'd do it all by hand anyway. Look, every piece that I make, I change my mind, I recut. You might notice this is probably... Oh, it's not double. It's close to twice as many actual openings here as you see. Why? Because I changed my mind that many times. Oh, by the way, hi there, shop pig. How you doing, bear? Oh, you're such a good pig. She's not Jackson Brown, but that is one good pig. Okay, so let's talk about what we're doing. Uh, here's the deal. A number of you guys have asked me about building this boat. We're building a gasser. We're building a gas scale hydroplane. If you don't normally follow along in my channel, we built one, oh, quite a few years ago now. Has it been four years already? I'll bet it's been four years, uh, give or take. And um, this, what we're building now, is the exact same boat, except it's got a quarter inch more hull depth. And the transom has been widened uh, one half inch. Now, and the sponson transoms have come back a quarter inch. And the bullnose has gone forward a quarter inch. The sponson tips are down one eighth of an inch. The floor now has my bullet, <laughs> my bullet <laughs> floor, where, where the bottom and the top radiuses are nearly the same. Uh, bullnose has gone down one eighth of an inch. Uh, the sponson chines, have been broadened slightly in the front and come up one quarter inch. Other than that, it's the exact same boat. Okay, so we changed everything, right? And again, that's just what we do as we go. Oh, the motor's going forward one quarter of an inch. Uh, other than that, it's, it's really, seriously, it's exactly the same, other than that the engine well is wider by a half inch. <laughs> and most of this, as I say, has changed on the fly. Here's where we're at, let's take a look. Oh, by the way, I, I, let me back up. I mentioned uh, some of you've been talking about maybe building this boat, and you're out of your mind if you do, just because I'm just, it's hard. Dude, it's hard to build it this way where you're cutting all this out yourself, but super duper rewarding. I am going to, as I always do with my boats, especially all my hand-drawn stuff, is I'll pattern all of this onto paper. And by pattern, I don't mean it's super cool CAD drawings, I mean, these actual components that I will glue into this actual boat, once I'm sure that I'm done with it and I like it, will get traced onto a long roll of paper, okay? And uh, I can take it to like a print shop and get it all changed into, uh, oh, you know, PDF. And I suppose, again, if you're completely out of your mind and want to try to build it, I could make that available to you. Uh, uh, I do some weird stuff. As you can see here, the, uh, let's talk about this, the Sponson runners. All right. Uh, I want them heavy in the front, so that's why I have eighth inch up here. But I only run them this far because I, I don't want eighth inch stuff going all the way back, and that's why I then attach it to sixteenth. So you'll see uh, two pieces like that, and then this weird step look right here. Uh, how does that work? Actually, it's not cut out of this yet. Let's get this out of the way really quick, and then we can... Uh, I'll show you. And it's just an example of, of how I put my stuff together. It'll need this eighth inch material. Once we add this section, it'll land into this channel here. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, again, there's just a, a number of strange things about that, that the way I just put my boats together. And, uh, you know, deal with it. You want to try to build it, it it's a big puzzle. Uh, people have done it. Uh, my old gasser, I did make it available, the patterns for it, and I know of at least two that got completed. Okay, so here we are. 
I'm going to show you how this thing's going together so far. I have, I intend to use my uh, carbon fiber mounts. They're not tested and proven yet, but there's no reason in the world they shouldn't work by the specs. They will work just fine. Uh, motor will sit in this neighborhood here. Okay, and it's going to go down. We haven't cut our engine well yet. We'll do that after we lay, we lay in some reinforcement on this floor. This, where you, did you see that piece drop in there? Okay, That's, that'll be the depth of our engine well. It's about a half inch. And it'll come up, oh, probably to this neighborhood. I actually drew this line here when I was kind of toying with motor position. Uh, my hope was to get it forward one quarter to three eighths of an inch from where it had been. That's going to be accomplished. It'll sit right about there, but down slightly, of course. Okay. Next up, let's see. Let's show you. Oh, here we go. Oh, we should talk about this. Oh, did you see that? Is that a sexy carbon fiber turn fin or what? However, it's too flexible. I had to try it, right? I drew this up and printed it. Uh, super cool material. Oh, it's the same material here. But, man, it's just... Ah, darn it, it flexes too much. I could make it thicker, but... Gosh, that's cool, though. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. Fuel tank. You gas guys are going to say, oh, you put in a fuel bag. Oh, they're super convenient. You can stuff it anywhere, right? These IV bag things. Have you seen those? I I'm not even going to get one out. It's not worthy. I've got a bunch of them. You want them? I'll sell them to you. <laughs> the problem with an IV bag is it's a closed loop system, right? The fuel line just comes out and goes here and it goes nowhere else. There's no vent, no nothing. You pull it off or you have a T and you blow the bag up full of fuel, right? And then you run it and it just kind of sucks the fuel down as it goes and away you go. Operative word being sucks, right? It sucks the fuel down. So it has to physically suck this bag flat and uh, the bags get hard. They start right away because they, they don't like the oils, man. They don't like the oil that's in the fuel, and so it, it attacks the material. They're, they appear to be some kind of vinyl, uh, uh, who, who knows what they are, but uh, they're, they're no good. They're, they're not compatible with, with two-stroke engines because there's uh, oil in the fuel and the bags get hard, and you say, well, you replace the bag. Yeah, but as that bag gets hard, between today's race and tomorrow's race, it's hardened a little bit, and it will now suck down with more resistance because that stupid bag is hard. You're changing your fuel mix as it's working hard to do that. No, run a solid tank, vent it. There is never a challenge for the carburetor to, to draw the fuel, to suck the fuel. Clear vent, no problem, always tuned perfectly. Hard tank, anyway, that's my story on a hard tank. The tank is going to go in right here, okay? I like this better. I had it back here before. Fine and dandy, easy to work with. The fuel lines actually are easier to run. This is probably going to be a challenge up here. However, I'm going to carry a little bit more weight on my turn fin at the start of the race, okay? And it'll lighten up a little bit and weight will actually transfer to the outside of the boat as the nose gets lighter, which is good later in the race as the water gets really, really rough. You guys know all this stuff. We've probably talked about it before. What else are we doing? Ah, um, we have, I'm making assumptions that this part's gonna work out. Sorry, I'm spinning you around. Here's all the changes. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. I don't mind. I'm not gonna let you see all that. This is our new radio box, my design I've been working on. It's excellent. It's going to be spectacular. Right now it's excellent. I have new designs that I'm working on printing right now. This is a, uh, a hard, oh, it's kind of a nylon based material here. This is fuel compatible, right? You can soak this stuff, doesn't care. Uh, I have a four gang and a three gang version. I don't run a, a separate, oh, your nitro guys are gonna run, uh, a lot of you guys run a fuel mix needle. And so uh, I can do three wire, four wire versions, but wires are built in, molded right in. Lid is a flexible filament. Whoo, baby, look at that, huh? It's just for the receiver, that's all. Uh, they make waterproof receivers, right? Or you can coat them with a bunch of coatings or spray them with a bunch of sprays and, and hope they hold. Darn it, I've had some of them that, that start to glitch. 
since I've been putting them in a box, they don't. I've been putting them in dorky little uh, cheapo boxes that you might as well not even have a box because you come come off the race course and open the box, it's full of water. Uh, but it, it, do, it does help. It keeps the water out for a little while, and I haven't had glitches since I've been doing that. Uh, but I hate them. And the, the smaller ones are a little bit too small, so it's really, really difficult to cram everything in there. The big ones are too big and look stupid. This is just right. It's not the mama bear, it's not the baby bear. Now, it's not the papa bear, it's not the baby bear, it's the mama bear's receiver box. That was stupid. Okay, anyway, I'm hoping it goes right here. It is going to go right here. That's where it's going, right? Uh, the forward deck will be in this neighborhood here. Just enough room to get that guy in and out. How am I going to mount it? I'm going to drill holes through it and bolt it to the floor. No! Don't be ridiculous. We're going to put Velcro on here. It'll sit down. It's not going anywhere. And I can rip it out of there in a big hurry if I need to. Right? Something goes wrong, you break a wire, or a wire twists up in your, in your pulley, or some, something stupid happens. You do something stupid. You need a way to fix your stupid. I'm speaking to myself here, by the way, because I, I always forget half of my stuff, and I go back and watch my own videos just to learn how to build things. Okay, so that's where that guy's going to land. Steering servo. We've done this on the last one, and, and a lot of guys are starting to do this now. So monkey see, monkey do. I, it's By the way, it makes me feel kind of good to see you guys copying all my stuff. This is going to sit in here. I didn't cut this out big enough, but it'll drop right into this right into this area here. And we'll build some plates on the back. The screws will go into aluminum, okay? And it'll hold just dandy. I'll actually put little lock, nut, lock nuts back there. We'll be glued onto the aluminum so you don't have to run the screws super tight. You run them through a lock nut, and just seat them, and they'll be good to go. Okay, that guy's gonna be right there. Yes, the pipe is close. It's not so close that it's a problem. I've done this before, it works out great. I use, I had uh, Todd over at Quick Draw make me a, a 98 degree, okay, 100 degree. Well, let's just grab, if we're going to talk about it, let's look at it. Isn't that pretty? No, I'm not going to run it. It's not going to work on a, well, I don't know. I haven't tried it. This is a zero torque, boy. Huge RPM. Maybe we'll try it. Anyway, I had Todd make me a, a 98 degree because I wanted this to get more or less centered in the hull, right? I'm trying to center up the weight. And so it'll shoot out right here where a 90 would do this number here, which is easy. But again, weight on the outside, super hot here. Okay, so this winds up sitting across, oh, somewhere in this neighborhood here. Plenty of room, right? Haven't made a mount yet. I'm probably going to print one. And all this stuff becomes available at Rattlesnake RC. If, if the stuff works, which it will, it will be available at Rattlesnake RC, but I wouldn't sell you anything that I wouldn't run myself. So I'm going to run it and make sure it works. But I'll wind up building uh, uh, some servo mounts, right? So you guys can do a couple different things, some wall mounts, some floor mounts, uh, some seating mounts, some upside down mounts. I don't care. You can pretty much draw up whatever you want. So this guy will sit, you know, this neighborhood here somewhere. What I did, this is an interesting thing, okay, uh, kudos to Daniel Place. Finally, somebody posted a video, and I saw it, and, I, and it was like, you know, I had one of those palm-to-forehead moments. Sorry, did that scare you? Uh, palm-to-forehead moments. Where I was like, duh. Uh, I wear out these cams on this, this, this carburetor that, that the quick draw guys like so much. It is a big bore. It does make huge power. Uh, but these stupid cams that that the throttle has to ride on do you see how that's mo it's moving outward as I twist it? Okay, and there's a needle inside. That's actually your mixture control And this dumb cam wears out why because this thing sits here and, and Wiggles the whole time. It's not that the servo is wiggling. It's that the motor mounts are wiggling and the servo I don't have it mounted over here on my other boat. I mounted it over here with a rod going across. It's holding it positively, and as the motor rocks, which it's going to do as the prop loads and unloads, this guy sits here and rocks, and so it's just constantly wearing that thing. With a bell crank here, I, I know you guys are yelling at your screen. I know, I know, you know these things. I didn't know. It never dawned on me, and I feel stupid, but I'm willing to tell you when I've been stupid. With a bell crank, and the thing pushing and pulling from here, this thing can rock all at once. This length just doesn't change. 
and so it doesn't move. Only the bell crank thing will move, right? So again, I'm an idiot. Don't be an idiot. Don't line your servo up. Use the bell crank. It's a little L bracket that'll mount on right here. Maybe I'll design it into the mount where you'll have a bell crank and this guy will sit back here. And I'll show you this stuff, okay? We'll, we'll uh, I'll, I'll build some mounts and we'll do this kind of thing here. All right? I think that's where we're at. What are we doing with the battery? We're gonna Velcro it down on the ground here somewhere. You know what I mean? That, that's no big deal. Okay, here's all we got. Again, let's just mock up. I got a lot to do. I'll show you more as we go along. Tell me what you wanna know, all right? If you're gonna build this thing and you have questions, start asking them now, okay? Hit the comments, hit the like, you know, the little thing that looks like that. Does it? I don't know what it looks like in YouTube. I'm a bad person because I must not click it enough. Okay, like my stuff. Leave me some comments. Tell me what you want to see. And uh, I'll show you everything that I can. And by golly, we're going to build a boat. Racing. Here we go. Oh, I didn't show. Oh, dude. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll edit this in somewhere. Bull nose. Here's how we do it. We're stacking a whole bunch of one eighth ply. Light ply. Can you see that? It's only three layers ply. It's not the five layer stuff. Light ply. Stack a whole bunch of them, mill it out. Why do I have two here, ask? Why is this one heavy? Why does this weigh a pound and a half? Hasn't been milled yet. You might see the problem if I line these up. Oh. Quarter inch wider center section. We didn't do it. So that became junk. This is our guy. It'll sit right in down there. After you and I are done talking, we'll go over to the mill and I'll mill this thing all out and it'll look like this. And it'll be super light and super cool. You don't have a mill, you say. That's okay. You can, you can cut these out when you're building your eighth inch ply pieces to stack up. Just go ahead and cut them out. And then you can go in there with a grinder or anything and just hog those things out. Just lighten it up. Okay, all right, so that's that's the whole deal on that. What else? I think we're done. I'm going back to work. I got a lot to do. I've got the heaters running on the epoxy right now. Winter came back with a vengeance. We're gonna trace everything out and then we'll glue this side here together. We're gonna mill out our bull nose and we'll start slinging some serious epoxy. Put the center section together. Then I'll come back and we'll talk about the Sponson design because that's exactly the same as the old boat, only entirely different. Okay? All right. Go work on your stuff. Let's go.